Good evening, members of council, staff. I see that we have quorum, and I call this regular meeting for Committee of the Whole to order. It has been moved by Councillor Papp that the agenda for the November 7, 2016 regular meeting of Committee of the Whole be adopted. Um, Councillor Gurley? <laughs> Uh, what I said before, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, corporate services report to be added to the agenda. Thank you. Call the question on the amendment. All those in favor? Any opposed? That amendment carries. And now to the main motion as amended. Any further amendments? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Next item is disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. That is any conflicts of interest that any members of council may have. Do any members have any conflicts that they need to disclose? Doesn't look like it. Can that be so noted? Thank you. Now we move to, uh, it's been moved by Councillor Durley that the Committee of the Whole report, or Committee of the Whole receive a report regarding the establishment of a court of revision and the recommendations contained therein be approved as follows. The committee recommend that council appoint five members of council to sit as the court of revision. And uh, there could actually be some councillors' names that, that go forward. So to the substance of the report first, and then we'll talk about going. Councillor Riviak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, clearly a court of revision may be something that's going to be required in this town, and we ought to be prepared for it. The uh, report indicates that, that it can be three to five members, and my understanding is that it's so that you can select out of the three to five members a minimum number that, that is meant to sit on the court, not all of them at once. Might I suggest that we simply have the entire council uh, be available for those reports, all seven, and, and select the four, I guess it would be four, and that would be required for a court when it occurs. We'll know who to pick on the basis of where, what location the uh, uh, the drainage is, is meant to go when we can avoid conflicts and all kinds of things. But it, we, we might get through this, thing, through this thing much quicker if we just say mm -hmm. all of council is available okay. and let's just pick. Madam Director, is that allowable? Uh, Mr. Mayor, through you, that's a good question. Um, I know that the Drainage Act is very specific and does say three to five members. So I don't think that you could just say all of council is available. Watch the microphone, please. Sorry, I missed that. Uh, there's a problem with the microphone. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I know that uh, the Drainage Act is uh, very specific and, and does specify that the Court of Revision is to be made up of three to five members. Um, so I don't think that we can actually say all of council um, could be on the Court of Revision. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Rubiak. Thank you. Just for clarity, then, is, is this court of revision meant to be appointed at the time that there is in fact uh, uh, a, a um, cause that is going to go, come in front of the court or is it meant to be sitting in abeyance uh, unless and until because the three or five are meant to be appointed by council in any case so if, if it's only when when a cause is actually brought forward to be examined by the court then do it then madam director uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, through you. Um, that is exactly why we are having this report on because the we have two drainage um, areas that are being studied. Um, the reports are being finalized, and uh, we anticipate that we'll probably convening that quarter revision either January or February. So uh, we thought we would appoint council um, or appoint that now and do a bit of training for those members that are appointed as a quarter revision. Okay, thank you. Can we, so you're, fine, you're thinking it consists of three to five members who have been appointed by council. I'm just looking at the drainage act. It does say three to five. Where, where only one municipality is affected by the court consists of three to five members who have been appointed by the council. Okay, so, council colleagues? Councillor Durley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Could you have five appointed and three sit, uh, alternating? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, through you, that is certainly possible. Um, uh, you need to have a quorum, and three would be the quorum that could uh, could sit. Okay. Committee of Adjustment works like that, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Committee of Adjustment. It's a good model. Yeah, Mr. Mayor Durley asked if the Committee of Adjustment works that way. That's exactly. how it works. Yeah. It says consists of three or five members, so you can't have four. Three, three two, or five. five. Three, two, five, doesn't it say? 
Three okay, to anything three further to Ms. Councillor Kersey? Why don't we ask for volunteers? It might narrow the field very quickly. Who <laughs> <laughs> would like to sit on the quarter yeah. revision? I wouldn't. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Oh, well, it sounds like we have two that wouldn't. So let's put the other five on. There you go. Done. Done. <laughs> okay, so uh, the motion would include then Councillor Riviac, Councillor Durley, myself, Councillor Kersey, and Councillor Junkin. Is that good? Fine. Can I call the question? All those in favor? Any opposed? That's Motion right. carried. Thank you. Good, good uh, suggestion. <laughs> Be my guest. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's been moved by Councillor Kersey. The committee of the whole received the 2016 uh, community planning and development report for information. Questions, comments? Councillor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had two questions regarding the report. First one is concerning the zoning bylaw. We've had our meeting where we sat with the consultants and yourself, Madam Director, um, and asked for certain revisions. Will the revised zoning bylaw come back to council prior to going public, or will it just go to public and then you'll infuse all of their comments into one final doc document? Madam Director. Uh, Mr. Mayor, through you, um, you'll recall at the time when we did have that workshop, um, there was, um, you know, certainly a desire by council to have that report or that draft bylaw come back to council before it goes public. And I think that's important so that you're informed of, you know, what the uh, proposed uh, changes are and because you will be, you know, probably asked by members of the public uh, information with respect to the draft zoning bylaw. So it's important that you have it as well and are informed in, about the uh, proposal. Okay, thank you. And the timing for that is in the 2017 is outlined in the report or is it before that? Uh, I am hopeful, um, Mr. Mayor, to receive a copy of that uh, draft uh, zoning bylaw um, by middle of November. Uh, that's what the consultant had indicated to me when I was uh, speaking with them last about a week ago. Uh, so I'm hoping to get it and uh, hopeful that um, probably it might be too short to get it to council before Christmas or at least make it available to council so that they have something to read over the Christmas holidays perhaps. Absolutely. <laughs> but I would think that's that, um, exactly you know, there would be it. a meeting probably early in January with council to to certainly review it and ask questions and that would be good. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Councillor Chris. Yeah. <laughs> um, on another matter, uh, so we'll look forward to getting some stockings that will hold the, <laughs> what's that? the getting a stocking that's large enough to hold the re report. That's right. That's right. I'm going to take it with me on my holiday for sure. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, my question uh, pertains to the section dealing with residential intel intensification policies, uh, indicating that we have some fairly severe restrictions on intensification um, in existing neighborhoods, um, and not so much when they're on uh, collector roads, etc. And I wondered if the new direction from the province this with bill 7 will have any impact on on this madam director uh, yes mr mayor through you i would expect um, that we'd be looking at these policies once we actually get the new growth plan out as well because they it will be establishing new targets for intensification and so i think this would be an area that would be revisited regardless Thank you. Thank you. Others, questions to the director? Um, just wanted to uh, comment on the building activity. Just keeps going and going and going. Um, amazing in October. And certainly the number of inspections. And it's, I, I did have a brief conversation with the uh, chief building official today about it and complimenting uh, him and, and staff for this. And, and he said that the interesting piece about this is um, these are the number of permits issued. So a permit issued in October, which is almost the highest month thus far in the year, second only by a little bit to June, means that 
there's a number of inspections that occur as a result of that. So I said, you know, are things going to slow down? He says, I don't think so because of the, the number of permits that have been issued, and that just sort of starts the process. And so we can see that there were 251 inspections um, really in the month of October. So compared to the previous year of 166, that's huge, huge, uh, huge increase. So uh, kudos to staff. Uh, for, for doing that and following up with that and being prepared for that type of building activity in our community. Um, Madam Director, there's been some questions. I don't think it's, it's, it's in your report specifically, but uh, questions about the um, existing arena lands. And I don't know whether to ask you <coughs> this or ask the uh, Director of, um, of uh, Recreation, Culture and Wellness. My understanding is that Council had said that we should do sort of some sort of um, open house or charrette or something like that uh, coming back to hear from the community. Can, can you just comment on <coughs> will there be a report coming back to Council with, with uh, what that process might look like to have a discussion with the community? Um, if you want to just wade into that briefly. Sure. Um, uh, Mr. Mayor, we certainly are going to uh, take bring a report back to uh, Council with respect to uh, that, what that will uh, look like. Um, on that property, we have the arena, we have um, some soccer pitches, we have the um, tennis uh, facility, and we have a park. And so there's, you know, a lot of type of uh, users that use that, um, the, that site. And so um, we'll need to have discussions with certainly Parks and Rec in terms of what is um, needed for, you know, park space in that neighborhood, what is uh, appropriate to perhaps uh, carve off and redevelop if, we, if there is that appetite to do that. And then we need to engage the um, community and understand from the community what their uh, desires are as well so we fully expect that there will be some type of um, you know fairly consultative process with the uh, with the public <laughs> on that and with council on that and uh, as senior management team we have not yet really you know sat down and had a fulsome discussion around what will that look like but uh, um, we certainly will and we'll be bringing a report back to uh, okay council. good I look forward to that I understand that CAO did meet with some and maybe another, and the director uh, with some concerned residents in the area and, and wondering what the plan is. And they, they of course, heard, <coughs> heard rumors. And so thank you for meeting with them. But I think it would be helpful to, uh, to have some sort of report back about a process that we can address the issue. Yes, uh, certainly uh, the CAO and myself did meet with uh, a number of residents about two or three weeks ago now, uh, one evening, and um, yeah, there's a lot of um, speculation about what is going to happen and, mm -hmm. and so forth with those things, <coughs> and we know that council has some interest in disposing of um, you know, part, part of those lands, what that part is and how much we haven't gotten to that decision yet. So. Okay, thank you. Anything further on that issue or any issues from the planning and development report? Okay, oh, Councilor Papp. Quickly, I'm very glad that you brought that up because it's speculation, rumors, etc. We want to set the record straight with them. Some of us were there when some of those discussions took place. The neighbors are seem to be fairly, they did a great job. Uh, they seem to be happy and understand it. And we also dispelled the fact that, as you stated in one of your, there was no vote. Um, and I think as long as that consultation process, because uh, they are, they're watching, I can tell yeah. you right now, they're watching very intensely, and uh, as long as we keep them through that engagement process, I don't think we'll have an issue. Thank you. Thank you. I think there was confusion about very surplus lot lands, because we did vote to yeah. make four mm -hmm. pieces of property surplus right, lands, right, and they were worried that, that it was right. that site, yeah. and that's not the case. Yes, and Madam Director. Mr. Mayor, through you, there was certainly, um, um, you know, with that group of, that came in, they did appoint a particular, you know, contact individual that we can funnel information through. So that will be helpful too in terms of keeping them informed. Yeah, we Good. Thank you. That's good. Any further on that or any other issues? Okay. Mm -hmm. There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. It's been moved 
by. I need a mover for this. I'm going to say Councillor King. Uh, that committee of the whole received the October 2016 Corporate Services Report for information. Questions or comments uh, to the director? Councillor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was, uh, I have a number of things. I, I was glad to receive this report because I was trying to figure out how I could get my, some of my requests onto the agenda. Um, <laughs> and I see some of them are, are touched on within the report. So um, one of the things that I was looking for was an East Fawn Hill development update. We hired, we brought a new person on, we got a preliminary report. It's been several months now. It's that that wagon's turning out there. So uh, I think I would like to see a new one. I see you're, you're talking about bringing these costs forward, uh, Madam Treasurer, and uh, I hope in the not too distant future, um, so that we can be fully informed on what's happening there. And I'd like to see those be brought not less than quarterly, Mr. Mayor, if, if possible, so that they could be part of the regular reporting regimen. Uh, back to council because that's going to be an ongoing thing for the next couple of years. Thank you. Madam Director. Just uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, just for clarity, uh, the report, the reporting on the uh, the actual capital asset projects that are going, that you'll get a capital update at the next council meeting with those, those projects that are ongoing right now. This is about um, the additional uh, costs for 2017, 18, and 19 that we've earmarked in those years, but uh, they could be pushed out to future years. Those are go going to be going through the uh, capital budget evaluation criteria that council has approved and then brought forward as part of the capital budget um, request. Councilor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. You. And I assume those will dovetail into that overall comprehensive report that we've had a first look at uh, back a couple of three months ago. So all of the, go ahead. Yes, through that, you, Mr. Mayor, updated, it will right? be part of your binder that you, so we'll be asking for those binders back so we can update that for you. Okay. Binder, is that comprehensive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, yes. You remember? <laughs> I remember that. I don't remember everything, Madam Treasurer, but I do remember the big binders. I've had to carry them and break my back, but thank you for reminding me. Um, but what I'm referring to, Madam Treasurer, is the item that we received in camera a couple of months ago. That's what she's talking about. Yeah, but she, she's saying they're going to be in the camera. In the, so I'm asking that they're going to be, the actual numbers are now going to be incorporated in that large spreadsheet so that we get more and more accurate as we go along. I see. And that that spreadsheet will be brought forward quite apart from budget on a, a not later than a, th than a quarterly timeline. So, Ma Madam Director, just through, through you, the 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 debenture schedule, no, 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 the capital no, no. project schedule, the whole the spreadsheet that we looked at, this section. Oh, correct. Yes, we were. We well, we'll have it. We'll actually have the diagram like we did last time, and it'll identify exactly what project is like in highlighted color exactly what project is for identified for 2017, for instance. So council will know exactly what okay. we're asking for for that year. Okay. So let, let's let's get the next update and then we can. We may, put it we in. may be talking about the exact same yeah. thing, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I'm getting older and it's getting late, and my speech gets a little garbled after about 9:30. So, motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking along that same line. <laughs> okay. Um, anyone else on that issue? Okay. Go ahead, Councillor. Um, as we enter into budget. Uh, and that preparation and analysis and what have you and I and um, I'm assuming there'll be issues brought forward as, with respect to staffing compliments and all of that it it brings to mind a number of reports that I think would help to fuel the discussion and inform the the discussers and w one of those would be a current uh, staffing complement indicating you know the numbers per department uh, what the roles are how many part-time people how many permanent part-time people yeah. how many contract jobs um, those sort of things and and also i think particularly in the area of part-time permanent part-time and contract how many hours they're putting in per week so that we have an understanding of really what we're dealing with at the baseline and then as we go forward and and if in fact new recommendations are brought forward then we can have a better understanding of where we're jumping off from 
You know, Thank I get you. we we get snippets all the way along, yeah. But it's nice; would be nice yeah. to see a comprehensive. So I'll allow it, but really, that's uh, under the HR director's. Oh well, I just purview. see that we're talking about like it's under right. human resources. It's, in, it's on page uh, whatever it is. But I can bring it forward. Uh, no, no, you can. We'll get the answer now. Air. I spoke. I don't want to because there is some reference to human resources. Uh, maybe the treasurer first, and then we'll we'll let the uh, Ms. Gilbert. Uh, through you, um, I know that it was directed before to council that the, the HR department is working on that comprehensive report. So my information here is just what's going to feed into that. What and page is that? Oh, here it is. Pages aren't numbered. Okay. Update staff. The corporate services held. How might we session to determine? What issues exist within the department providing customer service? That's the one. Yeah. Number of identified. Once the analysis is complete. What's the item number you're looking at? The, it, it's above. Uh, it's 13. Number 13. Okay. Thank you. Incorporate into human resources comprehensive report to council of 2017 staff meetings. That's what you're talking about, councillor. Yes. Okay. You need further information from the from Ms. Gilbert. No. Just requesting that information at some point. Okay, Ms. Gilbert, can we get that? Uh, so the council was looking for <laughs> the compliment, staff compliment, etc. Yeah. Pardon? Yeah, so that it inform the, we can understand the, the rationale behind any recommendations that are coming forward. We would have a, a clear cut understanding of our baseline at the present moment. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, absolutely. And so, sorry, if we're jumping ahead a little bit, when you get to my Cal report, you'll see that I made a note that uh, four staffing reports have been completed, and they're just going to SMT for final review and then they're presented to council. So those reports are okay. locked and loaded and ready to go. Wonderful. Thank you. Councillor Kersey, we'll see if anybody else wants to comment on the report. How's that sound? Or are you ready to go for the next one? I, I have one more, Mr. Okay, Mayor. go ahead. Um, I now, I, I think it's related to finance, but it also has <laughs> human resources overtones. Um, my, I would be interested to see the history of our, the expenses that we have incurred with re reference to benefits over the last five years or so to see how benefit costs have escalated, whether they're impacted by claims, uh, history, uh, you know, all of those sort of things. So that we, again, have some idea to see how our costs are moving forward over time. You know, we could probably piece it together if we went back, but I'm sure the treasurer and our HR director would be able to sort of put that sort of a report together. Okay, Madam uh, Ms. Gilbert. Three, Mr. Mayor. Um, unfortunately, benefits and the cost of benefits are all sit with our oh, treasurer, so okay. I defer. So, Madam to Treasurer. Yes, yeah, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Certainly, we can bring that report forward. I'll bring it. Uh, I can bring it forward to um, the budget impact meeting, or I can bring it forward as part of the discussion with uh, the overall budget process. Very often, it's one of those items where you say. The budget impact meeting benefits are going up by X percent, so or X dollars. So That's probably correct. better so there. So at the budget impact meeting, I would typically bring that. So I will just bring the history of that impact as well. Okay. okay. That'd be great. Good. Awesome. Thank All you. Right. I'm done. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good. I mean, thank you. Move uh, <laughs> to another member of council. No offense. No offense uh, I'll, I'll intended. The next report, Mr. Mayor. No yeah. offense intended. Uh, others to the uh, director's report, the treasurer's report. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much to uh, the treasurer for adding. We're going to be adding uh, information about development charges updates. Um, yeah. So, did you have a? There was no number printed here. I guess it was. <laughs> where is it? Actually, the last page on your. There should be a chart there. Development charge, charges chart. Oh, perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, I just got new glasses. Uh, yeah, perhaps I you can. For how small it is, I only had the PDF version, so I couldn't expand it. Okay, so maybe try and make it a um, little larger next time. But thank you very much. I know members of the community were looking at that, so we'll uh, we'll look to that. It's important, I think, to uh, to have. So thank you. Anything further? 
Can I call the question? All those oh, oh, Councillor Durley and Councillor Ribiak. Apologies. No, no, I was, Councillor I was Durley. The, uh, <laughs> oh, motion. Councillor Durley, sorry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Going through number 16 in the report, I see that our communication with MPAC has stalled even worse than it has ever has been. Uh, perhaps they're closing too many offices. But uh, we, we've sent a letter to senior management, and, and it's been intercepted by local people. And we've talked to local people for ad nauseum and, and uh, have gotten nowhere. So I, I'm just wondering what's the – is there a next step? How can we get an answer to this? Because apparently we're not able to get anything. Mr. Mayor, um, yes, we did, uh, as I indicated at the last meeting, we are meeting with our local representative on a uh, monthly basis, and, and right now it's almost bi-weekly. Um, at the last meeting, again, uh, we still had all of those outstanding issues that have been ongoing for months and months. So, um, you know, I reiterated to our local representative that we would be meeting with uh, other members of this to get these things resolved because we simply can't wait this long. It's, a, it's affecting our growth. Um, when she heard that uh, we had a, a list of uh, um, information that we were going to be presenting, um, it flipped on its head. So now we are having a correspondence call tomorrow, um, and they are going to expedite all of our items so that they can get resolved. Hmm. So. Hmm. Hopefully. Well, that's Thank you. good. That's good. I did speak to one of the board members of uh, <coughs> MPAC and indicate that we wanted to meet there, there's two MPAC members from Niagara region and I spoke to one of them uh, Walter Senzik and uh, I spoke to uh, another one probably about six months ago Bev Hodgson out of Niagara Falls so um, if we don't get action tomorrow we can proceed with that meeting well I'm, I'm um, a little bit excited that it's all transitioned so quickly because it's it's amazing sometimes when you can show them that you're going to go somewhere else to another level, how all of a sudden you get all the customer service returned. So uh, Victoria has seen, our tax clerk has seen some of the issues already resolved, and we're hoping that we can go Good. through with dates on these ones yep. tomorrow. That's great. Good. Thank you for Good. identifying that. Any others? All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. Been moved by Councillor Kersey. The Committee of the Whole received the October 2016 Fire and Bylaw Services Report for information. Questions, comments to that report? Councillor Pat. Just a quick uh, request, uh, and I think maybe the Chief has already done this. Every year we run into a situation where people are parking on the street after November 1st and uh, mm -hmm. snow removal starts. Uh, just as a matter of public awareness to I'm letting people know impromptu that take their cars off the street. But I know a public campaign, probably some sort of information wouldn't hurt because they're still parking on the street and I'm waiting for the first snowfall and then we'll, right. you know exactly what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Uh, so it's not a big deal right now because the weather's been great, but I see people are not, yeah. either they don't understand it and I'm trying to explain to them, you've got to move your cars off the street. Uh, Chief? Yeah, uh, we, when we change the bylaw then got rid of the two to six and basically it really addresses it the winter operation so you can still have people park on the road in December or January as long as it's nice weather if it's the winter control operations and Andrea's uh, team is out there doing work then that's when we hit the road right. and we keep people off the road so we're going to be doing a piece with Anna and uh, on the website and everything and we'll be blasting it out there especially mm -hmm. when it's getting close to you know a little bit cooler than 70 degrees when and if we get some frost <laughs> right? yeah. yeah but yeah well, we would definitely yeah. be I'm, all, I'm only doing so. you know because people ask me I say you got to move your vehicles yeah. we had a couple of situations last year I said I didn't know I didn't understand you gave me a ticket all the rest so that's great that's all I need to know good thank you others Councillor Junkin yes Mayor Dave uh, question is either to you or to the uh, chief and it may be uh, uh, ahead of time and it's not in the report but I just I, I see that in August the uh, the region has moved ahead uh, with funding for the new uh, communications uh, system I guess uh, so that does look like it is going to come down the tubes and it's eventually going to cost us about half a million dollars to join that is that I remember the chief was telling us that yeah. about, chief uh, some couple of months yeah, ago it's very Mr. Mayor. Um, this came to light in 2015, and uh, I believe it was in a previous report, maybe prior to you. Anyways, we've been doing, uh, putting away capital reserve money for the last 
two years, and we all have another presentation this year for improve, uh, increasing that. So by the time of the beginning of 18, because January 18 is when the system needs to be replaced, we should have enough money in the reserve to cover that. And, and I, I think half a million for our, our town is, is, is going to be a bit high. Um, right now the numbers are coming from our police changeover, and I'm looking more around the three. Oh, really? The mark, even, maybe even lower if the police can get our numbers down more. So we're, it's, it's going to be a kind of a work in progress thing, but we, okay. we've been slow. You can maybe ask the treasurer if the money's still there, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure we've, been, we've been putting it away for a couple of years now. It's about a dump truck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you very much. Any others? Uh, Chief, uh, there's a staff person here has uh, decided to retire from active service, long serving. Um, will he be honored at the installation dinner in Fawn Hill? Yeah, uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, uh, uh, Ronnie uh, Gilbert, and uh, we're, I'm just waiting for him to kind of indicate what he'd like to do. Okay. Because uh, we do have a service medal coming for him from the government, and so depending on the timing of that and the timing here, okay. uh, we're just I'm just waiting. To, for, to grant his wishes. Okay, thanks, Chief. Well, I'll certainly pass along our uh, thanks to him when you're next speaking to him. Thank you. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries. So, it's been moved by Councillor King that uh, the Committee of the Whole receive the 2016 Human Resources Report for information. Questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a, a question about uh, the interaction between uh, recreation, wellness, and the public works. Now, we're moving away from uh, RCW doing a lot of things, but they do a lot of contact with user groups and so on. Is, is there a bridge of communication that, that definitely is not going to let things get off the track? I have some concerns that uh, we may be creating a silo, and I don't like that. I, I like the bridge better than a silo. Uh, thank you. Madam Director? Through you, Mr. Mayor, and I'm going to actually also um, turn to our, our Director of RCW to um, support what I'm going to say. Um, as we do this transition of rentals over to facilities, our director of RCW and her team are highly involved in developing those relationships. So she's sitting in on meetings with our uh, manager of facilities and beautification. So she's helping to facilitate those relationships. Um, by moving it over to facilities, we've streamlined actually a number of things. One being, being the communication. We found that when the two parties were involved in a rental, the two parties were getting calls or emails. So we were, there was a lot of duplication of efforts. Um, so going through that process, and I don't know if you remember, but back in July when we had an in-camera session, we talked about um, taking tasks and putting tasks, grouping tasks, light tasks, and putting them where they belong. And it was that piece, that um, rental, that inward piece that didn't seem to fit with RCW any longer because they've really expanded <coughs> the programs that we push out to the community. So this was that one piece that, that fit better with facilities because again, facilities, apart from doing the physical rental, they do everything else. <coughs> so now they do that last piece so they own it all. So we've started the transition now so that our manager of facilities will have at least one full cycle with all of the user groups. So we're not doing it at the last moment. We're making sure we've got plenty of time to develop relationships and make sure nothing gets missed. Okay, that was my concern. Not only communication within, but with the user groups communicating with us. But that is, looks like you're, yeah, you've got that under control. Yeah, we're feeling okay. pretty good. So, so I'm going to kind of look over to make sure. And, and actually, also to our director of public works, is there anything that I've missed? Madam Director. Yeah, through you, Mr. Thank Mayor. Thank you. Um, as you know, on an ongoing basis, through our department, we're constantly in contact with community groups. And that will always be, that will never change. Um, when it comes right down to the actual facility booking, we refer them to Public Works, to the arena, um, and they actually make up the contracts and anything to do with facility bookings, that, that hasn't really changed. Once the rental is done, the uh, facilities manager takes care of their needs. But um, as you know, our department works with the um, user groups throughout, and it isn't like we don't communicate anymore. That would never end. 
we would always be communication. Um, we wouldn't be communicating with regard to their actual contract. That is something that the Public Works Department would be taking on. Okay, I understand the transition is going well. That's good. Thank you. That was my concern. Thank you very much. Anyone else to the director's report? I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. It's been moved by Councillor Durley that uh, the Committee of the Whole receive report regarding. Um, 1141 Maple Model Railroad Building Lease and Capital Update for information. Comments to this uh, to this report. Councilor Ribiak, Councilor Durley. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I'm just looking for the, uh, the the original bylaw that was that was passed. I just wanted some clarification with regard to to some something that it says in here. Uh, the party, the first party, agrees. I'm looking at 1A of the license agreement. The party, the first party, and I take it that's the railway club, to pay all costs of any necessary renovations needed to put the building in a satisfactory state of repair for use by the club. I take it that the actual practice has been not only did they put the building into proper, in, into, into a satisfactory state, but they maintain it in a satisfactory state. Madam Director. Three, Mr. Mayor, um, we don't currently carry any operating budget for repairs and maintenance on this building. It's strictly capital requests that you have seen in the 20 here. Um, so yes, the uh, Model Railway Club does uh, most of their own repairs. These uh, repairs that were identified through the facility condition assessment were put through into the 20 year capital plan, not, uh, not any operating expenses. Right, I just wanted to clarify because the, the reading of the bylaws seemed to indicate that it was kind of a one time event on their part to put it into necessary, to, to pay all the costs of any necessary renovations needed to put the building into a satisfactory state of repair. But obviously, what was meant was that they would not only put it into, a, in, into the right state, but they would keep it there as well and that's good that, that's the clarification I needed thank you okay thank you uh, who, who was else uh, Councilor Durley? thank you mr. mayor uh, the engineering report here causes me some concern because the some of the suggestions that the engineer is giving are bringing stuff up to modern and there is some heritage features in that building be the age being the construction uh, also the fact that it was the Quaker meeting house that uh, uh, has some historical significance uh, I'm just wondering if, if in fact we need to and we do need to do some updating on that uh, they're suggesting vinyl window instead of a wood window which would take away the the heritage feature and that's for one example but there are several others and the engineering report deals with apples and the heritage connotation would probably be oranges as well I wonder if we should look at that in and through another lens taking into account some of the heritage features that need to be preserved and I'm assuming that they would be significantly more costly than, than some of the modern materials that you can buy off the shelf so uh, you know it's just a, just a concern that the heritage community is going to be bringing forward I'm sure Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Madam Director Thank you, Mr. Mayor, um, the report, it's, I was trying to describe that in the report, that the budgeting is done based on the facility condition assessment, but when it comes time for uh, fine-tuning the budget for the upcoming year, uh, if there are finishes or recommended repairs that are related to elements that would have a heritage um, impact, or um, stronger visibility from a heritage perspective uh, and we gave some examples in the report then at that time we would consider trying to make sure there'd be a budget allowance to consider those increased costs for heritage elements so it's case by case the whole 20 year capital has not been prepared based on heritage um, replacements with a heritage feel on all of the elements but it's particularly interior finishes, say a, a railing or a, a, a doorway maybe, but things like replacing drywall or electrical work 
um, the staff approach up to now has been replace it to meet building code and to, to be cosmetically acceptable, but not to the point that we're trying to recreate, um, you know, heritage elements and, and use uh, plaster or such to try to, to meet what's there. It's, it's a, been a case by case, and we put in the report for Old Pelham Town Hall, that was the approach that was used, yep. and it, it seemed to be quite successful. Exactly, and I appreciate the, uh, the consideration given to Heritage on that, and I'm sure the Heritage community will as well. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Others? Councillor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. First thing, I'm, I'm aghast that we're dealing with a lease that was dated 1974. To my knowledge, has never been renewed or altered or changed. So essentially the folks that are there have been in there since 1974 and have done some modest amounts of repair and maintenance on it. Um, and now all of a sudden we're taking it back, it over and we're going to replace a roof and we're going to replace some siding and we're fixing the joists in the basement and all of that. And it seems to me in the broadest read of this that, that they should be doing that because that's what they pay us for rent. And if that's not the case, then we, if we fix it up and do the capital improvements, then in fact they should be paying rent on top of the heat and the hydro and all of that sort of stuff. In a normal, let me step back. To my knowledge, this, uh, Model Railroad Engineering Club is not open to the general public. They can't go in there and play with the trains and all of that. It's a closed club. It's a private club. And other than for occasionally being open for the public to come in for a tour or something. It, and maybe I'm wrong in that I think, understanding. Uh, um, I don't know if there's an answer to that. Well, my understanding is that it is a member member club. You can, <laughs> if, if one is interested in becoming a member, one becomes a member. You pay the fees, you do whatever. But. Right. Okay, so, so it's not the like point that I was trying to make is it's different than, say, a service club or a um, mm -hmm. the Banshell or any of these clubs that do something very positive and give back to the community in some way. This is more a commercial relationship between the town and the, uh, the, the club. So if they approached me as a landlord, they would enter into a lease which would specify their obligations and our obligations as landlord. We're landlord in this, in this situation. So it seems to me before we do anything, we should have a good look at this lease and have some discussions with them as to their understanding and what our expectations are. And if we're going to fix the building up over the next number of years, and put it into excellent condition and top operating uh, condition, then my expectation would be that they would pay a reasonable and appropriate rent to the town for the utilization of that building. No more so that if they weren't there and we fix it up and put it out on the open market, we should be charging market rent for it. Okay. So what are you recommending well, what, that we review the lease, that we talk to the group, yeah, that we yeah, find out more about them? I th well, I, all of the above, I think. Uh, first of all, we need to understand what they do and, and how they engage with the community and how the community can benefit from their presence in the community, albeit they've been there for a long time. So has Avondale been in their building for a long time as tenants. Um, secondly, what their understanding of the lease arrangement is, is it, are they responsible if the roof leaks to replace and has run its service life, do they replace the roof? Uh, or do they just patch the roof if it's leaking and when it comes time to replace the entire roof, are we responsible for that? If we are responsible for that, then part of operating that building is to recover some of those costs and build up a, a um, capital replacement cost for that building apart from being part of the tax base should be part of their lease built-in costs in my view. Again, I'm taking a very commercial approach to what may not be a commercial situation, but I don't really understand the relationship that's here. This, the document to me is, as a, as a landlord is mind-boggling, but 
Um, I think we need to do look more into the lease as a starting point. Then we decide how we approach that. Number one. Number two. When you look at some of the replacement costs on this on this evaluation, they're talking about replacing the siding, not with the type of siding that's there, which is representative of the era, but with aluminum siding. So if you go to the type of siding that's there, it's going to be a lot more costly. Thirdly, we don't even know if it really has any heritage value apart from context. So there may be only one or two items in that building that really needs to be preserved to represent the context of the Quaker Meeting House as opposed to the entire building. And I mean, heaven's sakes, it's been moved from one site, it's put on a concrete block foundation that wasn't existed in probably in the original. Half of the back entry is gone. There are a lot of changes that have taken place there since it was put in that place. So I think, and I have, Mr. Mayor, been trying to get a group to go in there that have some knowledge about it, a Mary Lamb being one, and um, we just haven't been able to click to make it happen. But I think that is an, imp a, an you know, alludes to sort of what Councillor uh, Durley was po pointing out. Either we deal with it now, or we're going to deal with it down the road because they're going to be marching in here uh, pointing out how we're not doing the right thing. So let's head it off at the pass. So I think there's a couple of issues there, Mr. <coughs> Mayor, the lease okay. and the heritage value. Thank you. Um, I, I think it would be it would be helpful to to maybe meet with members of the club and, and, and talk about it. I have gone in there, haven't been in there this year. I know that their open house is it this weekend or was it last weekend? I think it's this weekend coming up. So this members week. of the community, pardon, this weekend? Pretty sure. Members of the community can go in there and I think they open up four weekends a year, for instance, and uh, um, they get a lot of people going through and seeing the train set, et cetera. Um, I'm postulating that probably this building was here and the group came forward and said, we'll take care of it for you. And the council of the day in 1974 said, great, and entered into this type of arrangement. Um, I believe there was a change probably after we hired a facilities manager in terms of looking at the facilities. She probably brought the rigor of getting in the engineering report to look at that. And it's right around the same time that we were talking about the library where um, whose, whose role is it to replace the roof in the library? Whose role is it to replace a beam in the basement that's been like that for 50 ever, years. for 50 years? Whose role is it to replace the windows? And I think we saw in the presentation, it's, it's, I would ask that actually that presentation be part of this when it comes to council. But we saw in the presentation that the club has invested significant dollars, I call it significant, maybe others don't think it is, significant dollars through the years in the upkeep and maintenance of the, of the facility. I think it's just when it comes to larger items, um, the club probably isn't prepared to do that. Or I think Mr. Whitaker indicated we'd be happy to put up final windows, but you want something different. So if you want something different, you know, so that type of discussion should be had, and I think it should be had with the representatives of the club, and we can look at this. So um, before we go and send this off to a lawyer or something to say, what's this mean and how should we change it, I think it'd be important for council to have the discussion with the users of the club. So if um, as part of the... <coughs> receiving this for information if you want to give direction to uh, myself and staff and we can schedule an appropriate time to meet with the club to talk about it to figure out what the issues are we don't even know we know what the problem is but the problem is um, and maybe some members like Ms. Mrs. Lamb who are concerned about the heritage of the facility um, I don't know if members of the Quaker community might be concerned about it as well I ha we have had interactions with them mm -hmm. so getting involved in that discussion I think is the proper way to, to do it so if you want to leave that as direction that we try and organize that meeting 
but there's actually two parts there, Mr. Mayor. One with the club, and two with the Heritage Sphere Quakers at all. Uh, yeah. Well, and let's get. Wouldn't you bring them all together? Oh, okay. Go ahead. So if you can leave that as direction that we, if everyone's okay with that. No. A couple aren't. <laughs> Councilor Ribiak, and then Councilor King, and then Councilor I'm good. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mayor's perked up when, when reference was made to the Quaker community. I, I understand that there, there was an ownership relationship once between them and the building, but they got rid of the building. Isn't that essentially what happened? Isn't that why, why the town owns it? So I'm just... I mean, aside, aside from the fact that it is a historical fact that they were once involved in it, I'm not sure uh, what role we would ask them to play in terms of the disposition of, of the building going forward. Unless, of course, they feel that they should pay for some part of it, but but I'm not I'm not sure that that's that's going to be the offer. <laughs> okay, so with the railway club and with some members of the heritage community, let's call it. Which doesn't exclude, doesn't include the Quakers. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyone else to the matter? <clears throat> Councilor Durley, I'm sorry. A, a caution, Mr. Mayor. Th this document is not really a lease. No, it's, a it's a bylaw to authorize the uh, use of the building. If you go into a full lease, if that group is not exempt, now you've changed the status of that property from exempt to taxable, which adds to a little more complication, so that's just a caution. Well, taxable tenant, the property becomes taxable. All the factors. That's why we need you at the meeting along, <laughs> along with others. <laughs> In law, that's a lease. Okay. We're going to call the question. All those in favor? No, Any opposed? Motion carried. Look forward to organizing. <clears throat> That type of meeting. It's been moved by Councillor King. The Committee of the Whole receives the October 2016 Public Works Report for information. Questions or comments to the report? Are councillors working on their iPads? Is that what the delay is? Or yes. is there no comments? Director, um, I have a question about our councils. Can we just hear, get an update on Sulphur Spring Road? There's a reference in the report. Uh, Sulphur Spring Road remains closed. Um, we've tried to make accommodations for um, storing snow. We don't yet have a plan on clearing snow on Sulphur Spring. We're going to bring that information forward. Um, and we would be looking to council to provide some direction on uh, next steps or funding for next steps when uh, council is ready to consider that option on securing a consultant to see what options there are for reopening that road or closing it permanently, whatever the best option um, council would decide. Um. I'm a bit confused about the the clearing of the roadway, and yet the road is closed. So, how, how does that how does that work in terms of snow? The three, Mr. Mayor, it's only a small segment that's closed, so it's closed for through traffic. So residents can come in one end and come in the other end. Yeah. So it's both of those segments that can't be cleared with the snow plows that we have because they can't go in and back out. So it changes our ability to to um, maintain that road or to sand that road. Okay. And what steps have, <clears> we, <throat> have we taken to look at, like, is it a capital cost that's, do we have, what's the progress we've taken to open the road or close the road? Like, it's kind of in limbo. For you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have uh, expressed uh, the need to have additional funding. It would be a capital cost for a consultant to, um, yet we had an estimate of about $35,000 to do an assessment on the, the road itself and what are the options, what do each of these options cost, what are the liabilities. <coughs> um, and 
uh, so money would be needed to carry that uh, study out. Okay. I don't. Did did that come to council? I don't remember that coming to council. Um, it it has been mentioned several times. It hasn't come forward in a specific report request um, through consultation with the CAO. Um, <laughs> okay. Never well, hit this table. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember that. Um, it, it just sort of was closed and um, <laughs> sort of, as I said, in limbo. So um, that's why I'm asking questions about it. I'm sure members of the community are concerned. Uh, others uh, to the report. Uh, any to that item, or before we go to other items? Okay, Councillor King. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor. I'm just wondering when we might um, receive the feedback on the um, crossing pilot at Churchill. <coughs> through you, Mr. Mayor. We haven't uh, been through all the video and uh, responses yet, uh, just because we've been preparing for budget, so it'll, it'll be some time yet. I would hope we'd have time to finish it this year. It's just in light of all the other commitments we're trying to get through, but uh, we have video, we have comments, we have um, complaints, we have praises, we have photographs, so it's a matter of going through all that and trying to make sure we're comparing apples to apples. Um, and we also want to capture some equivalent video and photos of the existing um, crossing at Churchill. We have some, but we wanted to make it a comparative, if we can, same time of day. Same time of year when the bags are removed. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To that, Councillor Drilling. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, personal experience. I almost got clipped over there yesterday trying to go from town hall to uh, the church. That what was there certainly doesn't work because people aren't seeing lights flashing or any push the button and uh, the mayor and I crossed on the way back with another couple and uh, I think the consensus of the four were look out <laughs> so it, it was uh, it was certainly and a car went by at a pretty good pace and uh, you know it's uh, it was uh, to me it was dangerous I'm not sure the button worked on the uh, west side either so thank you others to that Okay, Councilor Riviak. Thank you. Uh, just to follow up on an item that I'm not sure was specifically followed up here, but let me let me speak to it anyway. Very pleased to uh, to see the note from uh, the director regarding the closing of Church and Foss at the end of this week for mm -hmm. work to be done on that uh, on that corner. Perhaps she would uh, give us just the thumbnail of this thing. Uh, <laughs> what's going to happen? Who's going to do it? Who's going to pay for it? How long it's going to take? You, Mr. Mayor, um, the engineering group has been in consultation with the developer and their consultant and their contractor. And it's uh, Beam who's been contracted to do the work, and um, the bill is being paid by the developer as it's the last remaining item um, for a deficiency for assumption of that subdivision. So the plan is uh, to do some core samples to see what they're working with. Um, and then to excavate and entirely remove and replace the manhole because that seems to be um, the installation of the manhole is the cause of the settling and uh, is irreparable. Um, so they'll have to bypass the sewage from Fenwick um, from an uphill upstream manhole to a downstream manhole and, and try to push this work through and support the water main that's also in that same intersection at the same time. So it's it's a tricky job because of the high water table. That's why they're doing the core samples early to make sure they know what they're working with. If I may, Mr. Mayor, so how long uh, is it anticipated that that intersection will be closed? Through you, Mr. Mayor, I'm not certain. At this point, they weren't certain. It depends on what the results of today's testing were to a large degree. Um, as soon as we know an estimate for closure, we would uh, pass it on for sure. Terrific. And if I may, Mr. Mayor, just one, one final point. So that, uh, that that depression has occurred, I guess, a couple of times um, since, uh, since that repair. Um, I'm assuming that there's some process 
that, that we're going to follow to ensure that, that, in fact, the fix is actually effective for the long term before we let, let people off the hook? Through you, Mr. Mayor, yes. Uh, there would still be the same maintenance period that would be applicable on that construction. Um, so that would change. That would be regardless of uh, the other assumption activities that were to be happening. Um, so that's been discussed with BEAM as well, that the warranty would still apply there. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you. To the director. Thank you. Any others to the director's report? Councillor Papp? Uh, very quickly, um, I just wanted to mention that uh, thank you for the pictures of the vandalism. Uh, I'm just have deep concern that it seems like the parks this year, for some reason or other, have become targets. And maybe I'm incorrect, but definitely it's been the most I've seen in a number of years. So uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, I mean, we just, the message got it. It's public property. We put a lot of effort to maintain it. Somehow people have a disregard for it. So we'll keep a close eye on it. And then on a very positive, I want to tell you that I got extensive feedback from a number of the neighbors around the area for the sidewalk repair. That was very well done, and uh, people appreciate it because those sidewalks were starting to uh, be a major safety concern. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Others? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carried. Been moved by Councillor King that the Committee of the Whole receive the October 2016 Recreation, Culture and Wellness Report for information. Questions, comments for the Director? Councillor Papp. Quickly, uh, item number nine. Can you explain to me? I've never heard. The Niagara Investment and in Culture of Indie Music Festival. What is that? Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, the Niagara Investment in culture right. is the regional fund right. we apply for an uh, annual basis. Uh, a indie fest is actually uh, musicians that create their own music, okay. so they're unique, and it'll so be a one-day event. So it's not spe 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 specific to some cultural group. No, it oh, is. I've never heard it of it. I just wanted Niagara to clarify. Area that we'll concentrate That's on. fine. My questions are answered. Okay. Thank you. Others. That's Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just wondering what the future is for our pilot transportation program. If there is a future. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we are uh, at the moment uh, sending out an evaluation um, to a survey basically to our ridership as well as um, it will be on the website and so forth. Uh, we've already received some feedback. We're looking into uh, provincial funding. There is currently a, uh, a new uh, funding source available on the uh, Ontario Community, Community Transportation Network is offering funding through the MTO. And um, as well as we're looking at the um, gas tax, transit gas tax to see. And what we'll be doing is uh, a report will be coming back to you um, to consider during budget. Thank you. Just to, to add, add to that, the region is now starting their mm -hmm. discussions, et cetera, regarding transit finally. So um, that's starting tomorrow, Public Works. So we'll see where that goes, and I'll uh, have to circulate that uh, report to Council and let you know where that's, uh, where that's yeah, going. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Anyone else on the director's report? Madam Director, one of the things that you're uh, undertaking is agreements with uh, various user groups uh, to use the uh, Palm Community Center. Can you give us an update? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, we are working diligently with the um, five user groups and uh, we will be working with the clerk's department to see when uh, we could uh, put them on the agenda. Um, hopefully our target was the 21st and we will work to that date, whether we will have all the ICE users at one time and divide them up or all of them at once. So the discussions are going well? Very well. Okay, good. We look forward to that. Thank you very much. It's been moved, oh, as I said, it's been moved by Councillor King, so let's call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. <coughs>
Been moved by Councillor Junkin. The Committee of the Whole received the October 2016 Clerk's Department report for information. Questions or comments? Question, all those in favor? <coughs> Any opposed? That motion is carried. And it has been moved by Councillor Junkin that the Committee of the Whole received the October 2016 Chief Administrative Officer report for information. Discussion on any of those items? We covered them all everywhere else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's been our purpose. I should not have to write a report. Call the so question. Just all those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. Yeah. It has been moved yeah. by yeah. Councillor Durley. This regular meeting of the Committee of the Whole be adjourned until the next regular meeting scheduled for November 21st. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Always a chore. I mean, always a pleasure. Isn't it? <laughs> Better ask Mike to cut that out. <laughs>